as you progress through your business, like every business, ex not expands, but grows, right? Every business changes over time. Um, what will be the functions of your business during each phase of your business is kind of what I'm getting at. Because if I want to be a coffee farmer and I go looking for lending and it takes five to six years for coffee to set, I'm definitely going to want to have in my business plan something to make money up until that point. I'm going to grow pumpkins. I sell pumpkins for five years. I do just fine. But as soon as my coffee fruit is ready, I ditch that out and I stick with the coffee. Okay? So you're going to want to talk about what is the function of your business as a pumpkin farmer caring for juvenile coffee. And then once you make that switch to coffee, then what is the function of your business? The function of your business is to pick, market, you know, brew, whatever it is that you're going to do, that's now the function of your business. Where before it was try to make enough money to keep the lights on so that we can get to the point where we can sell coffee. So for all the different phases of your business, and as you, as you grow, you want to describe each, each function of the business. Last page, we're almost there. <clears throat> where are we at here? Management. After we do the management class, this should be real easy. You should have four paragraphs for this section where you're going to talk about the roles of each chief officer. What is expected of that individual? Not like you're, not, you're supposed to be good with numbers or whatever. No, no, no. It's being able to, to look at the finances and ensure that we have a profit um, based upon materials acquisition or whatever. You're going to want to make sure that um, it's basically like a job description for each one of the roles. You don't have to have anybody in mind for these roles. You don't have to have names. I would prefer that you made up somebody because in the appendix, you're certainly going to want to have the resume in there. So borrow your, your cousin's resume and then just fib all over it. <laughs> and tell me that you think that he would be a great CFO because he graduated from Harvard when he was 12 years old. And he was a chief financial officer for Amazon. And da 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 da. And this is the reason why, right? So you're going to definitely want to include not the true people, but what you would expect a successful CFO to do. What would you expect your marketing officer to complete on a monthly, weekly, yearly basis? This is really self-explanatory when I start going through and I'm breaking down what is expected of a CFO. You're definitely going to want to have minimum CEO, COO, CMO, and CPO. That's not right. Yeah. yeah. Change that P to F. Please change your P to F. So CEO would be chief executive officer, chief operations officer, or sometimes called CPO, which is C chief production officer, chief marketing officer, and then that last one is CFO, chief financial officer. They can be. I want you to, if you have somebody in mind who would be a great CEO and CFO, and you, you definitely want to tell me what each role would entail, and then in your resume section or where you're basically describing these individuals, you'll say, I think this person would be a great CEO and uh, CFO because of these reasons. And then also you'll back that up with a resume. Okay. If you can't do a resume, it's fine. It's not as comprehensive and you won't do as well as anybody who does do that. Um, but at the same time, I definitely need to know what is expected in the roles of each individual. And I'll go through that. Where did I'm lost? All right. Um, who will fill the roles? You don't, like I said, you don't have to put a name, but you would say somebody who is good at this and has these type of qualities. This is the, who would be the perfect person for you in that role? Describe them. Somebody who follows directions <laughs> and doesn't ask any questions. 
right? <laughs> uh, we'll talk about the qualifications. This is a basically from the resume. It's the list of things that that individual had done in the past that makes them qualified for the role. Okay? So if you don't have any names in here, make them up. Make these individuals up. And just picture in your mind what the perfect individual would be in that role. And then when you find that person a year from now, you're just stumbling along and he's just laying there in the street and you're like, ah, I need him. You know that that's the guy you need. Okay? Um, reference CV, CVs or resumes. Anybody know what a CV is? It's going to be a very detailed resume, usually indicating um, where, where have you been playing in the industry. You're not going to put anything on there that doesn't pertain to whatever industry you're kind of going for, where a resume kind of gives a list of everything you've done. Although, I have so many things that I don't include on my resume. <laughs> You're like me, I've had way too many jobs. Um, reference CVs, resumes, uh, change in management, changes in management over time. So you're going to make statements like, um, I plan on being the CEO and the CFO for my company. I plan on hiring a marketing officer and I plan on hiring an accountant to, to take over the role, small, time, small kind of accountant, bookkeeper to do the CFO role. Um, but in about 10 years, I plan on retiring. So after 10 years, who would be, who, what type of person would be qualified to go in those roles? What would you expect from those individuals once you leave? Okay. Also contingency plans for death is huge in this section. So if any of my individual managers died, unexpectedly or had to take a medical leave, this is what I would do. You know, some folks, if, you, if CFO goes out sick, you might just want to go with an accountant or some kind of um, service agency at that point until you find the right person. If that's what you want to do or you might want to do, you're going to put that in the business plan. Personnel. Okay, personnel is different than management. We have CFO, CEO, CMO, and all those others over here, and then you have personnel. Those are employees. Those are your truck drivers. These are your pickers. These are your pruners. These are the ones who install your irrigation and watch after your cattle, okay? You don't need to put what their roles are, but maybe just a job title. So farm manager is not gonna be your CEO. He's going to be just personnel. Not necessary to have resumes, but if you have them, go ahead and do it. What are the expectations of supervisors or managers? Well, you're going to state in there that super, the farm manager, supervisor, individual will make schedules, will uh, coordinate harvesting, will set up fertilizer application dates. So you're just going to give a pretty good idea of what that individual would do specifically. Not so much what their qualifications are or roles like above, but specifically what do they do on a daily basis that, be, that describes their job. Total number of non-executive employees. Just give me a good number. We're going to have four employees. And then you describe what they would do. Describe any changes in personnel over time. Same thing. Well, in five years, I plan on having, uh, being done with my pumpkins and going into coffee. At that point, I definitely need to pick, if I, hire four pickers. And then you put that in there. At that point in time, things change. And then on your finances, you're going to show that in year five, you're going to go from one employee to five. And then you're going to put in there their wages or hourly rate and all that stuff. So you need to reflect your finances with everything that goes on with your business plan. <clears throat> We're going to talk a lot about one, five, and ten year plans when it comes to your business plan. You should really have a business plan for each one of those three. Truly. I don't expect you to. I definitely expect you to mention it, right? maybe detail it a little bit. But a true business plan would be, after year one, here's my whole business plan that we are going to live by for the next five years. 
And then at year six, this is our business plan after we expand to this, because you've already planned out the life of your business for the next 20 years. Best, worst, most likely case scenario. That's where that goes back to. All right. Changes over time. Uh, Long-term and exit strategy. This is where I was just talking about. The phases of your business over time. I'm on five acres now. I'm planning on making enough money off my five acres to buy 15 acres in five years. And in 10 years, I plan on using that money to buy 100 acres. Describe what your farm would be doing every step of the way as you expand. You're going to want financials for each one of the changes. Because your financials and year one mean absolutely nothing in year 10. And vice versa. Okay. Discuss milestones and expected points of transition. After we make $100,000 in profit, we are going to do this. After we have 1,000 customers, our business is going to start doing this. Okay. You're going to definitely talk about timeline of expected success, the one, five, ten year plan. Some folks, especially in agriculture, it makes more sense to do a one, five, ten, and twenty. Because sometimes you talk about mangosteen, you're talking 12 to 16 years before fruit. You're going to want to put in your business plan how are you going to make money before that fruits and how are you going to make money after the fruit is set. Okay? Definitely want to have two business plans in one. We talk about over time and expansion. Describe, describe expansion. Now, not set in stone, but definitely something that we want to happen. We would really like to expand in year five, and you describe how that expansion would go down. And the better part would be to put, if that doesn't happen, we're going to do this, blah, 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 blah. It's all about contingency plans. Can you put in your business plan everything that might happen? Remember the IPM I talked about a couple weeks ago for you guys and two days ago or three days ago for you guys? IPM, it's all about contingency plans. Do you have a plan for everything that can happen on your farm as a disease or insect or management thing? Same thing with the business plan. Do you have a contingency plan for everything that can happen to your business? Flooding. Uh, you talked about spraying an insecticide, or was it insecticide? Is it Milner? Was it insecticide that uh, you sprayed and killed off the whole crop? Oh, yeah, yeah, it was a fungicide. A fungicide. fungicide. OK, so <clears throat> if Milner had a business plan written during that time period and had properly put together a contingency plan for insurance and crop insurance, that would be in the business plan. You would have allocated money to pay for insurance coverage. And then after that happened, you would then go to Kreps or whoever would handle your insurance. And hopefully, they would be able to hand you 10 to 20% back, just enough to get you back on your feet. Um, so <clears throat> talking about contingency plans, things that might happen, you're certainly going to want to include something like crop insurance on here. Um, on the resources day, we're going to talk about the module. We're going to talk a little bit about that as well. But unfortunately, it's after this. Question? So in that long-term and exit strategy, then the source you have, like you were saying, the pumpkin growing before the coffee, you're going to write like a little mini like real estate thing? Yeah. There? Essentially, it's like Another up to year five, this is our plan. And then after we stop doing pumpkins, because at that point, your first business plan is worthless. And unless you have all of the business plans for all the phases of your business, it's not complete. It's not comprehensive. So know that you may not want to do a whole section there. You may want to do year one, year five, year 10 for almost every section. And you will certainly become a much more comprehensive business plan drafter. OK? I would hope to see a 1, a 5, and a 10 in every section as opposed to mashing it all together and then trying to get chronological with your wording. Forget that. Just label it. Year one, this is our operations. Year five, these are now our operations. And year 10, this is what we're going to do now. OK? It's where most people who take this class don't do well. 
they write one business plan. And when they go in front of the board and the board says, oh, you want to expand at year five, you have absolutely no data on that in here. And then, and then it's pretty much worthless. You told me how much money you can make in the first five years. As far as an investor goes, that's not enough time. I would like to see an investment going in five, maximum 10 years, and no longer than that. So you definitely want to show that by year 10, if you're having an investor, that there is a potential for profit. What will your profits look like at year 10? OK, describe expansion. We did the uh, management exit strategy. OK, super important exit strategy. Nobody wants to do their job forever. Okay, You can have an exit strategy set up like this. You have your CEO and your CFO, your CMO, and your, your other guy. You can say that after the business makes its first million dollars, we will then reevaluate our exit strategy. But for right now, you can write in your business plan, the first million dollars we make, the CEO has decided that he's going to retire. The CFO has said that that's good enough money for me, and he's going to retire. And that the other two are, are going to buy the business from the other guys with the profit that they made. So you're going to write in there, once we make this amount of money, or we get this amount of customers, or my CEO is 74, then at that point, we are going to do a switch. Okay. So. <clears throat> I hope I'm describing that right. Is everybody getting that? Exit strategy, you definitely want to have, if nothing else, a death situation written in your management plan. Okay, you want to say, if my CEO fell off a cliff one day, this is what we would have to do. Okay? So you want that in? Uh-huh. I definitely want to have that. I want to know. I want to know that the business is going to succeed after everybody's dead and gone. Maybe not succeed, or at least change or keep rolling or make somebody else money, or they sell the whole business off and the grandkids of the management, they, they do fine. Okay? It's all about your goals. What do you want to attain with your business? And that's what dictates this. Exit strategy, super important. After, in, in five years, I plan on passing the business down to my son. Exit strategy, done. It's not my problem anymore. Okay? <clears throat> Financial plan. Is it organized? That is a kicker. A lot of folks will try to do Word documents where they make their own tables and stuff. And it turns out that when they finally print it out in a format, it's never organized. And they end up banging their head against the counter because they, they did line, line, tab, 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 line, 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 tab, tab, tab. Well, what a great way to mess up. So I have created, like I said, uh, I didn't create it. Debbie Canoles, who's one of the teachers for our program uh, in the expansion, designed an entire Excel spreadsheet, like I said. that It's like 10 documents that you plug in numbers, and then they start populating each other. And by the time you get done, you have the whole uh, financial plan done. And hey, look at that. I organized it for you. I didn't. She did. I stole it. Um, I definitely want to see a balance sheet, a balance sheet, a in, an income statement, and an uh, cash flow projection. Okay, I would prefer to see one for one, three, five, or one, five, ten, or one, ten, twenty. If you're doing mango steam, okay. Balance sheet would definitely come in table form which wouldn't be included on that Excel that I give you. Income statement, definitely in table form. Just give me back what I gave you with populated numbers in it. You'll be fine. And cash flow projections, table. And please, if you can, make a graph out of that. Real easy to do on Word, or just do it by hand, old school way with some graph paper. Okay. Show me that over the course of the business that you're going to continuously make money. Or show me that you're not going to make any money until you start picking coffee. It takes off. If you could justify that with the investor, so be it. <clears throat>
and he thinks, I don't care, I don't need any money back. As long as you give me all the money I want back in 20 years, I don't care if it takes you six years for you to grow your coffee. Okay? Break even analysis. That was that uh, graph I told, told you about where <clears throat> it gets you over that hump of starting to make money after you've paid all your employees, you bought all your gas, you bought all your materials, you bought all your fertilizer, yada yada. Projected profit and loss. This is definitely a graph. You're going to have your loss on one side right next to your profit. And then the reader will be able to see the difference between your profit and your loss graphically. Real easy to do. If you have any trouble with these, that's why I'm here. That's why we're doing these private eval days. But I certainly hope that you would come to me before a private eval day to go through this. Okay. <clears throat> Break-even analysis, we did that, projected, blah, blah, blah. Going on, moving on, here we go, last page. You guys are so lucky, I never did this for anybody. Use of funds. <laughs> in words, <laughs> and very, in a very tedious manner, because it really sucks when you write this. It really, it's just awful. You're like, I've written the whole business plan, and now I gotta go over and describe like how the money's being used? Well, yes. Because if I'm going to give you $10,000, I want to know exactly where every single penny is going if I'm going to give it to you. So in that section, you're going to write, I'm going to get lended X amount of dollars. It's going to go towards tractor, blah, 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 land, rent, um, materials costs, fertilizers, and you put a cost next to it. And then after it's all said and done in the, you know, Investment versus cost should come out to right about zero. No investor wants to give you money to go on vacation. They only want to give you enough money to, to do your business. So if you can even it out as the cost versus what you've been lent and show that you're breaking even, that's the goal. Got that? Use of funds, literally a paragraph, or, um, several paragraphs that in words describe how you plan on spending your money. I want to buy this specific tractor, this specific model number, and it costs this much based upon APR, or whatever the rate is for that tractor. Do your research, and if you can't come up with a number, make it up. Make it up so that I know, that you know, that that's where that goes when you do find that data. Last section, I mentioned it before, consists of all of the resumes from your, um, from your management team, also yourself. Pictures of your products. What if I'm a lender from India and I don't know what the hell a, a bitter melon is or whatever, okay? So maybe have a picture of exactly what the product is that you plan on selling, especially if it's an added value product. If you're doing like jams and jellies or if you're doing <clears throat> if you're making chocolate bars, like have a picture of it. If not, have, a, have the label right there for them to look at. You're going to want to have professional references. These are going to be people that are in the industry <coughs> writing letters that say, your idea is a damn good idea and I like it. Also, people like Russell Rudiman writing you a letter saying that he thinks that your orga organic operation is a pretty good idea. What better way to get funding than have a state senator writing a letter for you and backing your, backing your plan, okay? I say that because Russell Rudman will take every single one of your guys' calls when it comes to this class. Um, of the 38 that, um, that we've had turned in so far with the 12-week version, he has written letters for half of them because People think that he is a good voice for their community and he backs a lot of agriculture and sustainable projects. So maybe it'd be a good idea to contact his office now to give him four weeks to, to write that letter or write your own letter that has his name on it. I don't care. But show me that you understand that you need professional references here. Definitely a letter from somebody, if you've been in your backyard doing hydroponics like Milner and you, and he's been selling his products to his neighbor, just his neighbor, and it's really, really good stuff. If his neighbor wrote a letter that says, he makes a pretty darn good product, that is a very, very great value. It shows that you know what you're doing and that you provide a product to somebody 
that enjoys it and is willing to write a letter saying, I really enjoy this product. I hope he makes more. Okay. Uh, market analysis reference data. If there is any section in this business plan that I would like real numbers, that's it. If you can't get it, make it up. But I would really, really, really like to have you confidently tell me that you couldn't find any data on your product and I had to make it up. But tell me why, you know. I might be able to find some for you if you give me enough heads up. I got a lot of connections and I know a lot of places to look. So maybe you tell me a couple weeks in advance before you're supposed to turn in your rough draft and I can possibly help you out. <clears throat> Market analysis is a relevant, relevant published info. Now, relevant published info certainly would be referencing the uh, nursery write-up that I have that has all the, the data, or that MacNut uh, write-up that we had gone over in the first class. Um, the numbers that you're using, you definitely want to show where you're getting those numbers from. Published info typically is going to be peer-reviewed or through um, some sort of society. So like that uh, nursery write-up is through the Hawaiian nursery group. They write it up. And then it's also through CTAR. So <clears throat> you're going to want to include in there that, published, that CTAR had published this information and it's backed by a university. They're willing to put this information up on their website because they feel it's valid information. Do you have any patents or ideas for patents? If you have any patents uh, in, in, uh, in, the, uh, in the system, can, can you provide the application uh, documentation in there? Significant contracts, this is very big. If I grow tomatoes, <clears throat> that's a bad example. Um, if you're the only organic papaya farmer on the island, you haven't even started yet, right? But somebody, say uh, somebody at Manalani Resort, uh, you tell him, hey, I'm, I'm thinking of starting this business. If I did start up this business and could provide you with the product that you, the amount of product that you want, do you think that that would be a great idea? Certainly the chef is going to uh, say it's a great idea and you go, oh, okay, let's put your money where your mouth is. If I show up here week after week with the contracted amount of papaya, let's write up a, uh, let's write up a con contract for this if I'm able to provide. So in the contract it, it states, if he's able to provide this product, the chef will order it for 12 months at this price. So before you even started, just like the tile thing, before you even start, you really go out there and you try to get contracts just like the GPS system. You try to get contracts before it's even produced. What happens if you get five contracts for papaya um, before you even produce anything? I mean, how good would that feel? I mean, sure, you've got to meet this expectation. It's a little bit more stressful on that side, but you don't have to worry about marketing. You don't have to worry about sales. You don't have to probably worry about distribution because they'll probably come pick it up. You don't have to worry about all those things. All right? Significant contracts. Please write a fake one, at least one, and get it in there if you can't find a real one. Yo. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I was almost there. It's the last one. <laughs> we sold papaya twice. Quite a bit of papaya. But before we sold papaya, we put up a plant. It cost us about two and a half million.